Uh, hi everyone. Uh, in this video, I try to uh, answer two questions. What is back EMF in motors? And why this back EMF is important in the operation of DC, DC motors? So to answer these two questions, I will start from the basics, starting from a rod that has a current inside a magnetic field, what will be the force, and we will build on these basics until we reach to the to the big picture. So let's start. So to decide the force direction in a rod that has a current inside a magnetic field, we use what we call the left hand rule. And as you can see here, uh, the left hand rule that uh, your uh, thumb will be the direction of the force, the resulted force. Okay, and the, this finger will be the direction of the magnetic field from north to the south. And this, the third finger, will be the direction of the current in the conductor. So let's apply this. Now, we have a current, okay, with this current uh, direction uh, uh, in, in the conductor. And we have the direction of the magnetic field, as you see, okay? So if we apply the rule here, Okay, so this is the magnetic field, but the current is into the page. Okay, so it has to be this way. Okay, so the current is into the page, as you can see in this, in the, in the third finger. In the second finger, this is the direction of, of your uh, magnetic field. Then the force will be downward. Okay, so I will have a force here that goes downwards. And this force, it's actually equal to the flux density. Okay. Uh, and the length and the current. The length is actually a feature of the conductor, so it's a constant. So basically, the force is proportional to the flux and the, the conductor. Okay, now, the same now, we have exactly the same conductor that has a current and we will exert a force. So now, forget about this current. And now we have a force and we have a magnetic field. Once we have a movement inside the magnetic field, then you will have an induced voltage. And that induced voltage now will be decided based on the right hand rule. Okay. And, and the right rule, as you can see here, uh, the thumb will be the conductor motion, magnetic field, and the EMF or the direction of the of the current. So we will have exactly the same thing. Now forget about this current. We'll just concentrate on two things. We will concentrate on the magnetic field, okay, and the direction of the of the force. So now since our magnetic field is in this way, okay, so the magnetic field is going into the opposite way and the force is going down, so this will be the direction, okay? So this is my force movement. This is the ma magnetic field direction, and now the current direction will be coming towards me, okay? The current will be from the middle finger will be coming towards me, so the current will be actually opposite. The direction of the current induced because of this movement is actually opposite to the current, the original current that generated the force. So we will have two opposing phenomena. And for this current to be induced, you will have to have uh, an EMF, electromotive uh, force, that is producing this voltage, which is direction will be opposite to the input DC voltage. So this back EMF, we call, I will call it EA for short, is equal to the flux density, the length, and the velocity, the velocity of, of your fuel conductor. Now, let's assume you have a loop. Now, in the loop, you have actually two conductors, not just one conductor. Each one will have a back EMF produced equal to BLV. So when we have two conductors, the total EMF will be adding to each other, so we'll have two B, L, and B. In short, the EMF is actually proportional to two things. The flux, 
which is represented here as the flux density, we know that B is nothing but the flux density divided by the cross section area. So this is a constant, because this is based on the structure of your motor. So you have the flux as a parameter. And instead of V, veloc linear velocity will use N as RPM, revolution per minute, because now we are rotating. And this also, now we mentioned before that the force is a function of B and I. Now, instead of a force, we have a torque because we have now a turning coil. So the torque is basically proportional to the flux, same like the back EMF, but it is proportional to the current that goes into the winding of this of this rotor. Now, these are the important fundamental two relationships for EA and the torque. Now, let's put things together and see how the EMF is so, the back EMF is so important in the operation of the DC motor. So basically here for actual motor, we have two components. We have the armature here and we have the stator, the rotor and the field winding. So this is called armature and it's called rotor. This is called the uh, field or the, or the stator. Okay, now for the armature winding, we have RA, the resistance of the armature winding, because you have a wire. And this is your back EMF, which is opposing to the, the voltage that we apply to the machine. So your IA as a motor, okay, it will have two opposing voltages. The one that created and the one that is opposing it that we have seen in the symbol, in the symbol wire. And this is your field winding. Okay, now let's just use one example of DC motors and try to understand the importance of the back EMF using that specific motor. So we'll use shunt connection. The word shunt connection means that the armature winding and the field winding are connected in parallel. Okay. Now, when I start the motor, just the moment I turn the motor on, okay, your back EMF, which is proportional to the flux, the flux exists because the flux coming from the field. So you have a flux, but also proportional to N. N is the speed. Now, the motor still didn't move, so N is equal to zero, so your back EMF is equal to zero. So this current has nothing to oppose it. Then the IA will equal to the VT divided by RA. Now, RA is usually very, very small resistance a fraction of one ohm so hence you will have a very very high current this high current can damage the winding unless you have extremely large windings now here comes the back emf once you start you have ia you will start to have a torque because we mentioned that the torque is proportional to the flux and IA. You have now IA, so you start to have a rotation. The motor starts to rotate. Once you start to rotate, then you start to have an EA, and hence your current now is limited. Its value is not allowed to go to a very high value, and thanks to the back EMF. So the back EMF, one of the important jobs it does in DC motors that it actually limits the armature current. But there is another important uh, job for this back EMF. Let's again go with the same thing with the shunt motor. And imagine that the motor is running, the voltage is fixed, but now I increased the mechanical load. You added more load to the shaft of the motor. What do we expect? To slow down the RBM will decrease, the speed will start to decrease. Now, when the speed decreases, the back EMF decreases. Why? Because we know that the back EMF is proportional to the flux and N. The flux is coming from the field winding. I didn't change it. So the only thing that changes is N. N goes down, then the back EMF goes down. When the back EMF goes down, then the net armature for voltage increases, which is basically the V terminal minus EA. 
Now, this net voltage will increase. Such increase will result in increase in the armature current because we know that your IA armature current is VT minus EA over, over RA. So this is increases, then IA increase. When IA increase, the torque will increase because we mentioned that the torque is proportional to the flux, which is constant, and IA. So the torque will increase, and that's what you want. You want when the mechanical load increases, you want to have more torque so that you will not slow down. You keep on running at almost the same speed. Now, when the mechanical load decreases, the opposite happens. Exactly the happens until you reach to them, the torque actually decreases. So another important advantage of the back EMF, it actually regulates the motor, the motor speed. So that is what is actually, uh, what is uh, the back EMF? And what are the two main jobs it does in the DC motor? It limits the armature current to a very safe value and it regulates the, the speed.